Good day, YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. I'll try and make this a quick little movie. Uh, concerns airmail surprises. First up to Laura Leela in Cornwall. She is Kathy. Uh, I thought you realised that I was going to send you those postcards, and the DVD was no good to me because it won't, won't play in Australia. I'm in what they call the Pacific, Asia, and Latin American zone of the planet, and all our DVD players are area coded. So I got it when I bought a copy of Aeroplane Monthly. It was in a plastic bag, having come out via sea mail from England, and I had a fair suspicion it wouldn't play. It duly failed to play, and I was thinking, well, who can I send it to? I need somebody whose address I know, and they've got to live in England. And there you go, Kathy. I've got your address, so you obviously deserve that video. And it made a nice container for the postcards. And yep, I remembered that your dad was a pilot, um, so I figured it'd be quite an appropriate swapsy for the sparkly, sparkly Spanish postcard, which you sent to me. As regards me moving up to a next level of technology so I can recapture control of the YouTube channel and receive PMs and make comments again and send PMs, um, it's, it's in the pipeline, but it's not an immediate thing. It's not at the very tippy top of my priorities. One of the delays involves this phone still having 270 megabytes of browser pack in its credit account and uh, I can't transfer that to any other phone. So I'm probably going to wait until I've used the credit or the credit expires, browser pack credit, and then I'll activate the Telstra Asher 300 prepaid and I've got to have a Telstra connection even though I don't plan to upload much through it because if I upload through Telstra I have to pay by the megabyte and I have to buy the megabyte as browser pack and the better the camera the more you pay to upload the movies this cost me a dollar 25 to upload 50 megabytes which is about enough for a 15 minute movie this phone that I'm using at the moment with a 3.2 megapixel camera has been known to upload a 0.99 of a gigabyte in one movie, an hour and six minutes. That'd be pretty expensive. If uh, I was paying Telstra prepaid prices for browser pack, that would make it a $7 movie. No, um, that's not much fun. And if I was to put it through the five megapixel camera on the Asher 300, might be a ten dollar upload instead of a dollar twenty five for fifteen minutes. The saving grace of the Optus connection is that whatever I do at the start of every twenty four hour period costs two dollars. Whether I send a text message, which might cost one cent on this phone, it'll cost me two dollars on the Optus Nokia connection. But for the rest of that twenty four hour period, everything else is free. So I can upload a gigabyte in a movie and it costs nothing because I've already checked to see whether the view count's gone up at sunrise. The plan to learn how to use a computer so I can get onto Google Plus so I can then learn to use the Samsung Galaxy Y, I've taken a tiny weeny little step along that path. I've talked to the bloke who works at the library who's got a solar panel on the roof of his car and therefore when we bumped in the supermarket we discussed the manoeuvre and he said yeah he probably is paid by the council to teach ratepayers like me how to use the public access computers as part of his job description in running the library so when I get a spare moment I'll have a go at that not going to have too many spare moments in the immediate future because yesterday I came into possession of a permit to burn during the bushfire danger season, a 21 day permit. So this morning I rang the burn notification line and I have to give them 24 hours notice because there's a lot of paperwork attached to burning now that it's the danger season. And I've rung all the neighbours and yeah, tomorrow I'm going to be burning again, probably taking on the inclusion zones that 
had stuff that was too green and too wet to burn a couple of weeks ago. I'll see how I go with that and if they don't burn too fiercely and particularly if I get some more rain I might even try to extend the perimeter particularly on that quadrant over there that hasn't been burnt yet. Um, for the record I did try to upload a movie this morning the survey of burns 19 to 25 those I conducted on the third notification period but for some reason the whole movie seemed to go up and then YouTube decided it couldn't process the file at the last minute so I deleted that one I'll have another go at uploading it later on tonight maybe it's a bandwidth issue somebody else has got a more powerful machine talking to the same mobile phone tower that my machine's talking to so yeah Kathy um, surprises come in the mail I got a surprise in the mail yesterday because this is the reshoot after the first time I tried to film the opening and didn't know I might use a huge amount of tape something else went wrong with the movie so all I can show you is the outside of the package the knife and the tape that I used to take the skin off and what's happened is youtuber Robert Hartlepool has sent me his copy of Peeps at Many Lands, which is a 1911 vintage sort of imperial geographical adventure elucidating the days when women rode side saddle following the hounds on a kangaroo hunt. And this was a 1909 painting 1909 was the year my father was born, so I'm going to really enjoy that, Robert. Thank you very much. I will set my mind to the task of dreaming up an appropriate swapsy, which I can send back to you, at least unless they shut the airlines down. Uh, while on the subject of things aeronautical and days of yore in the British Empire, um, I don't know whether Laura Wheeler will be up for this or whether you will, Robert, but I think another one of my British subscribers, Gadgets and Wheels, he might like to have a go at this. Um, in my copy of Aeroplane Monthly, which arrived by sea mail and I picked up from the newsagent yesterday, there's the most delightful idea as regards joyriding. You know, joyriding in an aeroplane not only does it combine open cockpit fabric covered wind in the wires helmet and goggles type flying making that available to the public so if you feel like it you just drive up to the airfield and go for a fly in a biplane but they've got three different extra levels of uh nostalgia i guess fantasia maybe i better just read the article for you I'll just move off the veranda to get better light. The idea involves this machine. Fighter Patrol, page 34. And I must admit, I'm kind of partial to Fokker triplanes because my old flying jacket has a patch on the back. Fokker DR1 triplane. Whereas I've flown in a pit special, I've only worked as ground crew on a Fokker triplane replica and uh, that patch is on my World War II vintage US Air Force mechanics overalls. Okay, so here's the rave. Fighter Patrol, Paul Ford, built, flies and displays an award-winning replica Fokker triplane painted all over red. Enthusiasts can now learn to fly alongside the Red Baron in a Tiger Moth with a choice of missions available. Which is why I thought of you, Laura Leela. I sent you a picture of a tiger moth. Now here's a chance for people in Britain to go for a fly in a tiger moth. And also, there's more. The idea for Fighter Patrol was born one sunny afternoon in the skies over Northamptonshire. Don't know where that is in relation to Cornwall or Hartlepool 
or wherever Gadgets and Wheels lives. But anyway, a fellow pilot was taking his wife out for a flight in their vintage DH Tiger Moth. He spotted me heading out in my Fokker DR1 and we hatched the idea for me to appear alongside as we thought his wife would be delighted. This turned out to be a huge understatement. As when we landed, she was ecstatic and described the experience as utterly incredible. Then we flew a photojournalist and he said that seeing the Red Baron appear from nowhere was the most terrifying thing that he'd ever seen. Since then, we've flown friends and family on an informal basis, but in order to fly anyone else, we needed to put the adventure onto a formal footing. So we set up Fighter Patrol, joined forces with Derby Aero Club, or Derby Aero Club, D-E-R-B-Y, and we now offer a truly unique trial flight experience package. Choose from one of our missions. An enthusiast will experience more than just a flight, more than just a lesson. We will wind back the clock and fly them into the past where they will be centre stage in a vintage fighter training scenario. Depending on the mission chosen, passengers will have the opportunity to fly with the Red Baron in the skies over the beautiful shires of England. We will, however, also offer a standard trial flight in a Tiger Moth. And my guess is that a trial flight in a Tiger Moth will be more expensive than a trial flight in a modern ultralight, but it will be well worth it. If you want the Fokker triplane as well, that will probably cost more money. Let's have a look at the three missions with the Fokker triplane that they are offering. Mission one, fighter patrol. A basic reconnaissance trial flight with a difference. Patrol the skies on a reconnaissance mission in a vintage aeroplane, that's your Tiger Moth. Locate the Red Baron, that means the person who pays for the flight is supposed to look around and find the Red Baron. And fly alongside this iconic aircraft. This mission is a gentle introduction to flying in a beautiful Tiger Moth. Passengers will experience what it was like to be a First World War observer and their job is to locate the Red Baron. Yeah, there's a little bit of sales pitch involved in that statement. You can't go for a fly in a Tiger Moth, which wasn't designed till 1936 or 38 or something, and say that you've experienced flight as a World War I observer. There are aeroplanes in Britain that are World War I vintage two-seaters, and if you've got the connections and if you've got the pocket, if you can afford it, you can go for a fly in something that will give you a much closer appreciation. But in the broad sweep of things, wood wire and canvas is wood wire and canvas. Open cockpit is open cockpit. Leather helmet and goggles is leather helmet and goggles. Biplane wind in the face. Silk scarf flapping in the breeze. Yeah, you've got most of the flavour. It's just that you've got a much more reliable engine and better understood aerodynamics. So the Tiger Moth is more fun to fly. Well, it's more pleasant to fly, easier to fly, less unpredictable, hasn't got the bad habits that a proper World War I two-seater will have. Mission two, fighter pursuit. Builds upon the reconnaissance mission, experience the fear and exhilaration of being hunted down and chased in the skies by the ultimate First World Fighter, First World War fighter flown by the Red Baron. Mm, yeah long stretch of the imagination to call the DR1, what is it, the ultimate First World War fighter? I think you'll find the Fokker D7 would go closer to that. Um, perhaps the SOP with Snipe, but the Snipe was a bit heavy, although, yeah, anyway, we'll, we won't bog down on that. Marketing spin is involved. You've got to let them get away with a few porkies. Mission three, fighter ace. This provides the ultimate First World War fighter patrol experience. The quote Red Baron will hunt the Tiger Moth down and the instructor will do his utmost to get away. Trainees will experience a pursuit and a simulated dogfight as their instructor demonstrates some of the more advanced manoeuvres developed by the early fighter pilots as they gained a greater understanding of the capabilities of their new magnificent flying machines. Following the flight, there will be a full debrief with the CO and then tea and a cake with the Red Baron. But I don't think they're really going to dig Manfred von Richthofen up 
out of his crypt. <clears throat> Paul Ford. The award-winning Fokker DR1 GFOKK in the colours of the Red Baron was built by Paul and his wife Sarah with the assistance of a fantastic group of friends and family. Paul has been involved with vintage aircraft ever since he was 11 years old. You lucky man, you. When he was worked, when he was worked as a volunteer at Duxford, it doesn't say he worked. It says he was worked. Okay, in chains was he? Whipping a lash. He took part in many major restorations, including the Blenheim RE8 and the B17. He counts himself as privileged to have known Ormond Hayden Bailey, and it was him who inspired in Paul a passion for flying that knows no bounds. An accomplished mechanical engineer by trade. Paul served an apprenticeship and then spent 26 years at the world-renowned University of Cambridge Department of Engineering, where he investigated soil mechanics, fluid mechanics, and combustion for Rolls-Royce, BAE systems, etc. Now, if anybody can explain to me what Rolls-Royce and British Aerospace Systems wanted to know about soil mechanics, I'll be greatly interested. Fluid mechanics I can understand, combustion, but what does Rolls-Royce want to know about soil mechanics for? He was mildly distracted by robot wars for a while and appeared as part of the Cambridge University team with, quote, Mortis, a hugely popular and successful robot. Paul has done a variety of other TV work too, and GFOKK has appeared in a number of programs. The one he is most proud of is W, a Channel 4 production. And from what I can make out, it appears... Judging by the detail of the single rocker arm and the push rod, he's got an actual rotary engine in that Fokker triplane. So it'll handle like a dog. So, <clears throat> fighter patrol, Derby Aero Club, fly with a red baron, the ultimate tiger moth trial flight experience, gift vouchers available from fighterpatrol.co.uk or email them at fighterpatrol.co.uk Okay, so I think we can call that uh, aeroplane surprise to and from Britain to the Antipodes. Or perhaps just coffee on the veranda. But yeah, Kathy and Robert and Gadgets on Wheels Maybe you can race each other. Perhaps Magna 59 as well. And my British subscribers, maybe even Greatex up in Scotland, you can all, all race each other to be the first to post video of flying with the Red Baron. That would be a challenge. Maybe, perhaps, tongue in cheek. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.